I've always had a thirst for culture, and even though I knew Turkey would be a challenge, it was exciting. I'd been in Turkey for five weeks before the camera crew joined me on this trip. Today we rose at 5.30, and after a cup of awful Turkish coffee, we headed out to go hot air ballooning. We drove through the tiny village of Uçesir, which hadn't even risen for morning prayers. It was so early. The launch site is about half an hour from the town of Gorome. And I think you've all met Lars. He's going to be piloting the balloon. And uh, then you've got uh, Ismail and Mike, and I'm Kylie. We're going to be following you with the jeeps and the minibuses. And uh, you have to be very nice to us because we transport the champagne to your landing site. Ever since my accident, I've tried to push the limits as much as I can. First of all, it was my sport. Now I've got a new passion, and that's travelling. So I'm always on the lookout for fun and interesting places to go because it's such a liberating thing. When the balloon is pumped up and big and round full of cold air, we'll start to use the burners by shooting the flame inside. And as the cold air gets warmer, the balloon will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually the whole thing will stand up, ready for you guys to climb on board. We wrecked the place a few days before. The last thing I thought people in Turkey would think about was a wheelchair accessible balloon. Although the basket was almost impossible to adapt, Lars had come up with an ingenious invention for me to use. It's a garden seat with extended legs that enabled me to see everything in comfort. No, that's perfect. Yep. Thank you. We're going to put a seat belt around you as well. Yep. Can we get it? Okay, come on. We're flying. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. It travels quite fast. Yeah, it does, eh? We, we have more speed. If we go up a little bit, we, it goes quite quickly. Now we're doing four knots, which is about seven kilometers an hour. But if we go up a little bit, I think we're going to do easily 30 kilometers an hour. Naomi and I had been looking forward to this for weeks. Things had been a bit quiet and we needed some real adventure. I'd seen a lot of landscape from the ground level, so I was excited about seeing it from the air. Cappadocia is straight from the set of Star Wars. The landscape is unique and was formed from volcanic ash. The soil here is very fertile, so they say, although it doesn't look like it. Let's see it like this. Hey, look, it could be a couple of apartments. No, 20. Cappadocia Balloons is run by Lars and his wife Kylie. Lars has been ballooning for the last 28 years, the last 14 of them in Turkey. We were heading into winter. And even so, everything was still really, really dry. It was amazing to see that people were still actually growing stuff in what looked like a dry, lifeless, sandy soil. But that's how they make a living out here. If they find somewhere to grow something, it'll be utilised. Lars, can you tell us a little bit about the chair and why you saw the need for it? I mean, I, I had had different chairs, but I'm looking for to do something which is professional in that mm. way, which would be with, with a full harness, mm. uh, which would be adjustable in height, mm. and ideally they should be able to swing 90 degrees. We've had quite a few people with disabilities come through and do yeah, the heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, though. It's such a way to get out into nature, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's right. yeah. We did a couple of bushwalks and this, yeah. this is by far easier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an irony to my life. I broke my neck and damaged my spinal cord in a rugby league grand final when I was 15. I went into a tackle with my head down. But at times, I'm aware that I do more now in my life since my accident. One of the great things about this balloon trip is that I'm not bound by any limitations. I'm experiencing exactly the same things as in any any of the other able-bodied people in this in this little picnic basket that we're in here. So I've left my wheelchair behind, but I in no way in no way feel disabled at all. So it's it's, it's a great experience to be able to feel like you know you're experiencing the same thing as everyone else is. <laughs> Come here often? Yeah. Just thought we'd drop in. Yeah, well, funny, we should, we've got some champagne actually. We could, we could share that. You're going to shoot the guinea pig. So, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah.